train against some mobs, for example, to level up your parry skill. Salut survivors, welcome back to Solidworkers channel in Valheim guide series. In this video guide, I will share with you more than 20 tips, some about exploration, followed by resources gathering, then construction, and finally combat and skills. In Valheim, there are so many tips I wish I had known when starting. I now spent more than 100 hours playing the game, so I selected 5 tips per category. Please share, like, and subscribe for more Valheim videos. To be noted is that this game is in early access, therefore we should expect balance patches and additional content soon. Now, let's get straight to the video survivors. Exploration in Valheim is extremely important and exhilarating. This is how you will progress in most cases, how you will encounter great challenges, and how you will have very enjoyable moments. But this can also become a big challenge at times. Tip number one. The very first tip I will share with you is that whenever you find a new thing, whether it is a tree, a mob, a stone, a berry, just take it. Because it is a way how you will unlock recipes for cooking, crafting, building, and much more. Therefore, explore the world and carefully obtain new ingredients to unlock new cool stuff. Tip number two. Swimming costs stamina, and you cannot regain stamina while swimming without using potions. Therefore, it can sometimes become very tricky to cross rivers after a long run. A good advice is to always take a good rest before crossing a river, refill your stamina bar and get going. Please note, you could also encounter an enemy upon reaching the other shore. Tip number three, something I learned the hard way and will definitely help you in your exploration. Whenever you are going to a remote exploration, build a spare portal in your main base, give it a name, then go in your voyage with the ingredients in your backpack. You will then have the option to build a portal in the faraway land. This way, when you have reached very far lands and probably discovered something cool, you can simply build your portal, give it the same name and teleport back and forth to the main base. This is also very useful in case one of your friends dies so he can easily pick up his body. Tip number four. Exploration on the seas is fantastic as well. Ship sailing is just really great and I might make a video guide on how to sail and use boats. But this can also become terribly dangerous. For example, during a far trip bringing back hardly acquired metal ores, you could end up being under attack by a sea serpent. And even though one of your friends would be firing at the monster, your boat would be heavily damaged. Here comes a tip. Carry on yourself a hammer and 10 pieces of wood. This way, you can anytime land on the shore, build urgently a workbench, and repair your boat with a left click within the area of the workbench. Tip number five. While daytime exploration is not very difficult, you will likely be attracted further and further away from interesting spots to another. However, spending the night time exploring could become dangerous in some instances. A good solution I used several times now has been to seek refuge during the night in a burial chamber or in a sunken burial dungeon. Because outdoor mobs will not enter the dungeon. However, you of course need to pay attention to the dungeon mobs once inside. Bonus tip. Early on, whenever you encounter beehives in abandoned houses during your trips, you should try to collect the queen bees from the beehives so that you can start to produce honey at your base. You can refer to my beehives and honey video guide for more information. Tip number six, gathering resources is well thought of in this game. In the sense that it is not too much grindy since most of the items you can craft or build requires just reasonable quantities of ingredients. 
However, in some instances, such as for the metals, they are considered heavy and the challenge is not so much in gathering large quantities, but it is in being able to carry the metals with considerable weight, in the inventory, in the hopes that you can bring back home as much of the metals as you can. But there are solutions I wish I had known when I started playing the game. Solution 1 is to purchase and equip the Megging Jord belt at the trader which increases your backpack carrying capacity from 300 to 450 kilograms. Another solution is to utilize a cart that you can craft to carry out large amounts of metal from one location to another. The same can be said with a boat, you can load items in large quantities in your boat. Tip number 7. There are many kinds of food in the game. And as in most cases, some of the early food that you can see and gather will be used as ingredients for more advanced recipes later on. Some foods are abundant and easy to obtain, such as raw meat and raw neck meat. In contrast to red mushrooms, raspberries and blueberries, yet these are important ingredients to make carrot soup and quince jam, respectively. Therefore, I would recommend early on to eat meat and try your best to reserve berries and mushrooms for future recipes and potions. Tip number 8. Bone fragments is in early game an important resource required for crafting and upgrading of your weapons and armor. You loot these out of skeleton mobs, but you don't find them as often as your regular basic grading mobs. You will likely have a shortage of bones in the early game, and an easy solution for this is to find a burial chamber dungeon and within the dungeon you can locate a violet looking evil bone pile. This is the skeleton spawn point. It will keep spawning skeletons regularly and you can farm these skeletons to your heart's content. Therefore, be careful not to destroy the spawn point when going down the burial chamber and you can mark the said burial chamber on your map, et voila! You have your very own bone farm that you can come back on for future bone farming when the need arises. Tip number 9. While scouring around biomes for resources, you will also tumble upon plants that say seed of some type, such as carrot seeds or turnip seeds. And for example, with the turnip seeds, you can plant these seeds to harvest turnips at first. It is then recommended that instead of cooking these turnips, you first replant these turnips into seed-giving turnip plants, which in turn will provide you with three turnip seeds each. This way, you will triple your amount of seeds for better food production in the future. Tip number 10. There are trees all around in this game, but something that does not seem very obvious at first glance is that there are different kind of trees, and more so. They each have their own unique kind of wood. For example, pay attention to the pines in the black forest for collecting core wood. Core wood is used, for example, for constructing pike defenses, among others. Or pay attention to ancient trees in the swamp in order to collect the ancient bark wood, just to name a few. Bonus tip, when out there in the world cutting wood, you can easily increase your harvesting speed of cutting trees. You can do this by locating multiple trees that stand side by side, hitting these with only one swing of your axe. This way, you can hit two trees, or a tree and a log, or even hit two or three logs with a single swing. Very efficient axe swinging, if you ask me. In this game, construction is very well made and it offers tons of possibilities in base building. There is an easy snapping of building components that makes it easier to build and it even has terraforming features. Very useful for building castles atop of hills or digging canals for connecting seas, to name a few. Tip number 11. Construction is 100% resource refundable. So do not be afraid to build, 
you can easily be refunded if you just plain made a mistake or if you decide to change your mind. The hammer tool can be accessed by equipping it, right click to select what to build and left click to build it and the middle mouse button to destroy what you are hovering. If an item breaks or if you remove a block of your structure, do not fret. 100% of the resources will drop on the floor for easy pickup. Tip number 12. Also, be very careful of the use of the hammer middle mouse button for retrieving back resources. A consequence of tip number 11 is that it presents some risk as you can so easily remove a component with a middle mouse button click. It also means you could very easily click on a critical block and the structural integrity of the building could be affected with big consequences, such as the collapse of a portion of your building which was previously supported by the removed block. Tip number 13. Fire constructed indoor is very important in the game. It is required for cooking, it provides you comfort and light, and it is also necessary if you desire to sleep in your bed by night. Yes, it is very realistic, but what is also very realistic is the smoke generated by the fire. So while it is very useful to place a fire indoor for the said reasons, besides protecting it from the rain, you need to design your building with a smoke exhaust system. Tip number 14. The different crafting benches in the game are upgradable by adding improvements within close proximity of the crafting benches. There will be numerous of them over time, and this can be consuming lots of space. So you can either have a nice looking crafting area, for example, with ample space in the main floor of your base, and then place the improvement beside the benches. But what you can also consider is during the early game, to have it much more compact and save space. In order to do so, you can place the improvements either underneath the floor or above the ceiling, as long as it is close enough to the crafting benches. It is all up to you. Tip number 15. Terraforming is really great in this game, but I have learned the hard way that excavating to a lower level is actually a lot easier than elevating the ground. Therefore, if you desire to build a castle with a moat around it, it is much faster to build on higher grounds at first, then excavate around your palisade perimeter for the moat. But you can definitely fill the ground at some portions also. An early game bonus tip. While you will instinctively build your first base in the meadows biome, I highly recommend to select an area in close proximity to the black forest, as early on, you will need many different types of resources from this biome, whether for building, crafting, or cooking. Tip number 16. The very first thing you need to know is that your skills in the game will level up as you utilize them. So, for example, the more you use your bow, the better your skill with it. The more you run or swim, the better you become at running or swimming. With this in mind, you can therefore decide to purposely train to skill up, whether train against some mobs, for example, to level up your parry skill, and similarly against friends by enabling the PvP mode for a training session. Happy skill leveling! Tip number 17. There are three main types of physical damages, piercing, slashing, and blunt. And different mobs and bosses can be either resistant, or weak to some of these type of damages. It is recommended to equip yourself with the possibility to deal damages in each of the three types. On one hand, you will likely use a bow and therefore be able to deal piercing damage this way. And you will likely have an axe to chop wood and you will be able to deliver slashing damage with your axe. Therefore, it is good to get started with a club as well for blunt damage. This way, you cover all three types of damages. Then, you need to practice each of these weapon types and orient yourself to which monster is resistant or weak to which type of physical damage. You will be grateful to have leveled up all three of these skills, as in some cases, such as against Bone Mass, the boss of the Swamp Biome, it is highly recommended to have practiced blunt damage. 
Tip number 18. This game can be played solo, of course, but it is best enjoyed playing with a group of friends. I would highly recommend that with your friends you learn to practice different combat formations. To give you some ideas, when dealing with some stronger mobs you will like to sandwich the enemy. And while your friend has the aggro and parry, you can deal damages and alternate this based on the mob aggro. Another formation. When being in a burial chamber, for example, one can hold a torch while another one can use a massive hammer for area damage and take down the multiple skeletons. Also, during some fights against numerous grey dwarves when spending a night in the Black Forest, you can fight back to back of each other in the true Viking style. Tip number 19. A critical thing to understand in this game is the food mechanism. In this game, you don't need to eat all the time, as you cannot starve. You will always have a minimum of 25 HP, even if not eating. However, you will get big bonuses to your health and stamina when you do eat. So I suggest that you eat well before fight, and you can eat up to three types of food. Therefore, you should at all times have in your backpack three types of food, so you can get up to three bonuses whenever you need it. Tip number 20. Lastly, a critical tip, which me and my friends have been using for several times now, is to always build a portal not too far from a boss of the biome you are about to attack. It goes without saying that there should also be the pair of the portal in your base. This way, if ever one person in the group dies during the battle against the big boss, the player can revive back at the base, e, then take the portal close to the boss, go to pick up the backpack and continue to fight for the victory. Bonus tip! In your house, you will get rest, and rest will give you a buff. Depending on your comfort level, you will get a very useful rested buff. Therefore, try to have a high comfort level in your house, so for every time you go out on a mission, you will have a longer rested buff bonus. I hope these tips will be helpful for your own discovery of the game, that you will enjoy exploring, building and conquering the world. If you have any comments, suggestions, additional tips, feel free to leave a message in the comments section below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you won't miss out on my future videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon on my next videos. Until then, have a good day. Cheers.